You might have heard of the term milk dromida before, the term that refers to the final product or the final collision between Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxies. And though sometimes it's also referred to as milcomida, the point is the same. Based on some of the discoveries from 2012 and some of the observations with the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers established that in 4 to 5 billion years from today, the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy are going to begin their collision. And according to some of these early simulations, this will eventually result in a giant elliptical galaxy that over the course of 150 billion years is eventually going to absorb the entire local group. The group of galaxies that you see right here with nearly a hundred known galaxies eventually combining into one. Or so the story goes. Except that a few years back, we've discussed one of the first potential propositions that suggested this might never actually happen. Or it might happen, but much, much later, and will actually involve something entirely different. And so, hello on for person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss one of the major studies in regards to this potential collision, or technically I guess, non-collision, discussing some of the new studies and some of the new simulations that seem to have established that this collision is now extremely unlikely. But before we discuss the most recent study, let's actually go back in time, back to 2012, in order to find out how all of this was established and why scientists proposed the idea behind Milk Dromeda to begin with. And it all started with a study you see right here, the M31 Velocity Vector. A study that was based on some of the observations by the Hubble Space Telescope, with the main focus being the vector of velocity of various stars inside the Andromeda galaxy. And this was actually done in a pretty intriguing way. It basically involved what we usually refer to as astrometry, measuring the motion of the stars in order to figure out their properties. And so here, by measuring positions of many different stars between 2002 and 2010, in relation to a lot of distant galaxies whose velocities don't change much, and by essentially using thousands of stars from the Andromeda, here scientists were able to work out a relatively accurate average proper motion compared to these distant galaxies. And it turned out to be very, very small. By averaging over a thousand different stars, they essentially obtained average proper motion with a very, very high accuracy. And by combining this with the redshift of these stars, which of course showed us how fast these stars are moving toward us, researchers behind the study established that the Andromeda galaxy as a whole was moving southeast in the sky at less than 0.1 milli arc seconds per year. Or just to rephrase this, it was not moving much laterally, yet we knew it was moving toward us at approximately 110 kilometers per second. This was based on the observations of blue shift of various stars. And so because the lateral speed was very low, but the speed toward us was pretty high, it essentially implied that this galaxy was moving toward us and was possibly on a collision course. With various calculations eventually establishing that in approximately 5 billion years, our night skies potentially would look something like this. Twisting and stretching in the way that you see right here. With additional studies from the same time also establishing that the triangular galaxy that's located nearby, which is the third most massive galaxy in the local group, will possibly also participate in the collision and maybe also join the Milky Way and the Andromeda. Which I guess would mean that it's a Milk Tridromeda? Triandromi way, milk andro triangulum. Yeah. Anyway, the point is that they would combine into one. And so with further simulations, this was established to be almost a fact. And it stayed this way for the past decade or so. But a few years back, we've discussed one of the first signs that this could maybe a little bit too simplify it, and there could be a little bit more to the story. With some of the first studies basically establishing that some of these early calculations might not have been entirely accurate and the Andromeda might actually not be moving directly toward us, but could have a slightly different vector. But this new study does something entirely different and comes to an entirely different conclusion. The 2025 study by Til Sawala and the team you see right here on the no certainty of a Milky Way Andromeda collision. A very impressive study that basically combines gravitational effects from pretty much everything inside the local group in a process discovering that, yeah, the collision in this case might be very unlikely. And so let's discuss how this was discovered and what all of this means. First of all, in the previous studies, one thing that was not considered is, of course, dwarf galaxies. Galaxies like the Large Magellanic Cloud, that despite their small mass, do affect a lot of galaxies near them gravitationally. As a matter of fact, we know that the Large Magellanic Cloud seems to affect quite a lot of stars in the Milky Way, 
and is also breaking apart its partner, Small Magellanic Cloud, forming a visible bridge between them. This is referred to as the Magellanic Stream, and you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And this of course highlights that these galaxies do produce a lot of gravitational effects. And so when it comes to billions of years of interaction, their effects can be quite dramatic. But in order to figure out what effects this would have when it comes to the collision of the galaxies, here scientists behind the study relied on 100,000 different simulations stretching for approximately 10 billion years into the future. But to make all of this as realistic as possible, they also try to include as many variables as possible just to see what happens to the Milky Way and the Andromeda. And so by including 22 different variables that could affect potential collisions, and by considering various statistical errors, they then ran this 100,000 times, focusing on some of the most certain outcomes after these 10 billion years. And the initial velocity and position for most of these galaxies were based on some of the most accurate observations from the Hubble and from the Gaia Space Telescope, essentially making this one of the most comprehensive studies on the galactic velocity. And while it turns out that, because there are so many variables here, we end up with a lot of uncertainty. But intriguingly, approximately 50% of all of these simulations resulted in absolutely no collision whatsoever. And so in half of these simulations, two galaxies would fly past each other with a separation of at least half a million light years, producing no effects at all and maintaining their spiral shapes and of course their overall structure. And here this didn't mean that the collision would not happen, it just meant that the collision might happen in a very very distant future, possibly 20 to 30 billion years after this, as they start to reapproach and try to collide again. And so basically here they would have to first dramatically decrease their orbital velocity. This is a process we refer to as dynamical friction. But even here, in some cases, because the galaxies pass so far from each other, these dynamical friction effects would be extremely low. And so in half of the cases, the collisions were basically unlikely to happen anytime soon. But what about the other cases? Well, in 48% of the cases, galaxies came close enough to have these dynamical friction processes eventually decrease their orbit and eventually initiate some kind of a collision. But here even this would take much much longer and would only result in a merger in the far far future. So definitely not 5 billion years and way more than 10. And it was really only in 2% of all of the simulations that the galaxies experienced the head-on collision that was previously predicted to happen in 5 billion years. Or in other words, in 98% of all of these simulations, the galaxies did not merge directly and only ended up merging much much later. So once again, in 48% of the cases within 10 billion years, but in 50% of the cases, they just ended up passing close by without any significant influence on one another. Which essentially implies that this idea of Milkdromeda existing in 5 billion years from now, now seems to be extremely unlikely. Here, the gravitational pull from nearby galaxies like Large Magellanic Cloud and the Triangulum Galaxies seems to change the motion of the galaxies too much, making their overall trajectory very different. Which also implies that by the time any of this happens and by the time the Andromeda and the Milky Way finally collide, the solar system will probably no longer exist. But in essence, this new study comes to a completely different conclusion from the study in 2012, even though the data itself is not that different. And really because in this study, it was only based on the vector of velocities of various Andromeda stars. This didn't take the dwarf galaxies around Milky Way and the Andromeda into consideration. And partially because we didn't even know some of them existed until relatively recently. And for the Andromeda galaxy, there is an extra mystery. As we've discussed in one of the previous videos in the description, for some unknown reason, the Andromeda galaxy's partners, and here we're talking about nearly 50 different dwarf galaxies, all seem to be kind of tilted and sort of shifted toward the Milky Way, which almost certainly changes its trajectory in some way, but more importantly, currently has no explanation. It also to some extent kind of violates certain cosmological principles. Once again, we've talked about this recently in the video in the description. But based on this conclusion and based on all of these computer simulations, we can now almost certainly say that the Milky Way and the Andromeda are not going to collide anytime soon. And if they do collide, it's extremely unlikely to be a head-on collision like predicted before and will probably involve several orbits around each other, which will probably take a few billion years. And mostly because the Andromeda galaxy gets a lot of gravitational effects from Triangulum, while the Milky Way galaxy gets a lot of effects 
from large Magellanic clouds, with both galaxies pulling on the Andromeda and the Milky Way in a way that slowly changes their trajectory by just a little bit with every single orbit. Although if the galaxies do collide, even then we don't really have much to worry about. These collisions are extremely unlikely to result in actual stars colliding, and though some stars might get kicked out of the galaxy, none of the planetary systems are going to be influenced in any way. And that's because there's quite a lot of distance between individual stars, and so even during this collision, if the Sun is still around, and if the Sun still has planets around it as well, there is probably going to be no effect on anything. With the only possible effect maybe being the increased activity from the central black hole, and possibly higher number of supernova because of the collision of various types of dust. And so whether the collision happens or not, almost none of the stars in the Milky Way or the Andromeda are going to notice at all. But because of this new study and because of these new simulations, I guess we're going to have to cancel that galactic collision party. Sorry everyone, they're not going to collide, probably. Or at least that's based on some of the recent simulations and recent observations from the study in the description. Once we discover something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon, where you can actually find quite a lot of additional videos and videos you've never seen before, including videos with no ads. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.